I just found five drum hacks that need to be tested. Maybe they'll make your drum set sound better, or maybe they won't. First up, this comes from Sylvia Massey's book, Recording Unhinged. You might remember I did a video about this book in the past where I tested out a simple patina recipe, but there's another page that really caught my attention where they talk about bass drum muffling, not with a pillow or even a paint can, but with a bike tire inner tube. The illustration in that book has the tube kind of just like floating on the inside of the drum, so we'll test that, but what I think is a little bit more practical is to have one tube on the outside of the reservoir head and then one on the outside of the batter head. Sounds like a bass drum. Sounds decent. It's not as muffled as before, but obviously there's less muffling than before. Can anyone spot the issue? You can still play the drum, but there's just a lot more force involved, and I guess also there's the risk of you popping the inner tube. So I guess we're forced to put this on the inside of the drum now. Eh, close enough. Does it work? Yes. Is it practical? Not really. Having the one inside the drum was pretty simple and easy, but it wasn't very practical. Having the two is a little bit more practical, but isn't as easy. I will say that it sounds really good, and having the one on the outside was really easy to do, and doing the one on the inside was a little bit harder if the drum wasn't as deep, and also if the porthole was like a centimeter bigger, it would be a lot easier. But if you're in the studio or something, then I'll definitely try this out. Next up, let me go to my notes, talk about Warby Parker, the sponsor of today's video. For those that don't know, Warby Parker is a company committed to providing you exceptional vision care, both online and in stores, offering everything you may need for your eyes, from eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, with glasses starting at just $95, which even includes prescription lenses. What I found the most convenient is their free home try-on program. You can order five pairs of glasses with no obligation to buy. They ship for free and include a prepaid return label to ship back after five days of you trying them out. You just take a quick quiz to help you pick out your frames and they arrive at your door for you to try on and see what suits you best. As someone who's pretty new to the world of prescription glasses, I ordered a couple different sizes and colors and shapes just to live with for a couple days to see what fits me and my style the best. By far the most easy and convenient experience I've had trying on glasses, so you can try out five pairs at home for free by going to warbyparker.com rdr or just follow the link in the description. Next up from TikTok, let's watch, watch this, this trick for when your bottom snare, snare head is trash. trash. That is definitely a trash snare side head. The hoop of the drum is lower than the edge of the shell. That should probably be replaced. Definitely has been cranked on a couple times. If we flip it over though, and then just mush it over the head, I guess uh, it gets tight enough now. It seems like it worked. The hoop is no longer lower than the shell, so let's give this a test. We got Sir Benny in the building. I borrowed this drum from a friend because about a year ago, I replaced one of the lugs and I remember the snare side head was very cranked and thankfully drummers are lazy because he has not replaced the head since. It's not horrible by any means, but this is the best I could find, or I guess the worst I could find. So far, so good. One of my concerns was the tension rods being too short, but I don't think that will be an issue with this drum. The main thing I wanna be aware of is the gap between the shell and the rim. You can see here, it's kind of wide, but over on the opposite side, it's kind of tight, so I'm gonna pay attention to all that as I'm tuning it. 
The head tightened up just fine, but one thing I'm noticing is the snare gate on the rim is, uh, is higher than the snare bed of the shell. I will say that these snare beds are a bit deeper than most drums, and I would love to take this head off and use it on a different drum, but surprisingly, I don't even have another 13 inch snare. So this will have to do. This is why we test these things. If we go back to that clip, first of all, he put the rim on the wrong way, which I mean, we're all guilty of, let's be honest. But also it looks like that drum is missing the butt plate. There should be some screws in those holes. But in all seriousness, I feel like this would work out in a pinch and with a little bit of muffling and maybe some tape on the snares, it might sound a little bit better. But with this drum, the snares aren't even engaged on the snare side head fully because the strap is hitting the rim, which is why this drum sounds a little bit honky. This next one comes from a comment that was left on my previous testing drum hacks video. So if you have a hack you wanna see tested, then drop a comment. Best way to make concert times, instead of taking the head off the resident, put Remo silent strokes and now you have concert times. So why would you do this? Can't you just take off the rezo side head? Technically, yes, but there's two main issues you might run into. First, the lug inserts make a lot of noise. And second, now that there's no rim on the drum, the bearing edge is exposed, and if you're gigging a lot and loading in and out night after night, there's a good chance that the bearing edge might get dinged up and ruined. There is a video of Stanley Randolph playing at PASIC one year, and he did the classic no front rezo head, but there is a head there, but really there isn't trick but he did it on his toms and they didn't really sound like concert toms and i mean he easily could have been going for a different type of sound so maybe mesh heads are the way to go they actually sound halfway decent They sound just a little bit choked, but in a good way. There's clear emperors on the toms right now, but I feel like with a single ply or even black dots or something, you could really dial in the concert tom sound. Next up is a revisit or a reinterpolation of a hack I tested where you put a V-belt inside the shell of a metal snare to dampen it. So yet again, this is a comment from that video. I picked up an old steel Royal Star snare and it had clear silicone under the batter edge for the same purpose as the belt. Silicone obviously doesn't fall out. I can't wait to dig out 40 plus year old silicone. So that was another thing about the belt. I tried to put it on the top bearing edge, but it just kept sliding down. So it didn't really work. So the good thing about silicone is you can just squirt it on, let it dry and you're good to go. Here we have old belty. This is a steel shell, which means we can fill up the bearing edges with some goop. And while we're at it, we might as well fill up the center bead. When it comes to muffling and dampening a drum, there are tons of ways to go about it and doing this is by far the least practical way to do it for pretty obvious reasons. So this one I would say is a fail. Do I really need to test this one? This has got to be the most unresponsive beater to ever exist. 
And that's with the tension maxed out. I give up. <laughs>